It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, Deerfield live cam up here. And wow, look at the water clarity. Really beautiful today. Lots of look down fish out there as well. Saw a couple kudas in the background chasing the fish around. And uh, don't see them very often. But let's move along to uh, today's topic, today's subject, which is uh, really not much. <laughs> I don't have a lot to talk about as far as uh, news goes. There's not much in the news section as far as silver and gold. Uh, we've discussed ratios, uh, which you know we can talk about that again. We'll talk about spot prices here. Uh, the charts, that's the one thing. It's done the same thing. It's all the activity is happening in uh, the morning, New York open more or less, uh, all, you know, the up and the down activity. We'll take a look at the 24-hour charts for silver and gold. Uh, move into a little bit of news, talk about Wall Street uh, silver, and I'll answer some questions from the uh, uh, yesterday's video. Sorry about getting yesterday's video out so late. Uh, had a couple technical issues. Uh, you know, I'm <laughs> this is not a high-tech operation we're running here. So <clears throat> occasionally I do run into a few minor issues, and uh, we did kind of get a little bit late today. Uh, as well as this morning, I've had a couple issues. I've had to reshoot this thing a few times, and uh, that's a little bit frustrating if you've done these before. Well, let's look at uh, one thing I want to discuss with you is something I think, I hope that I convey to everyone all the time, which is think for yourself and always question authority. Uh, it's something I've done most of my whole life. Maybe it's gotten me where I'm at. Maybe it'll get me in trouble. Maybe a little bit of both. But you should always think for yourself and always question authority. Uh, and as you know, I'm not a big fan of corporate news. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the red party or the blue party. I've kind of, you know, I, I do think for myself. I think, uh, uh, and I believe a lot of people do as well. And that's probably why you watch my videos, because you're a thinker and you do things for yourself and you do question authority. Uh, the other thing, it's the, these are like my two mantras, kind of, and this is my second one. You hear me say it all the time. Of course, the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't play, you can't win. Uh, it's a saying by Robert Heinlein, and it's absolutely true. Uh, you know, listen, it, the game is rigged since the, I, I say this like all the time. So some of you probably get sick of me, sick, sick of hearing it, but you know, uh, the game is rigged from the day you're born. It's it, it's everything. It's markets. It's this. It's that. Um, so, you know, of course it's rigged, but don't let that stop you from living. Don't let that stop you from playing the game. Don't let that stop you from making money, whatever it is. You know, the important thing is that you know the game is rigged. Learn how it's rigged and learn how, how to beat the game. And that's the, uh, you know, that's kind of what I, I try to teach a lot of people here is uh, how to beat the game when it comes to uh, precious metals and uh, a lot of other things as well. Let's take a look at uh, markets this morning. They're kind of choppy, sideways action. I'm going to do a quick refresh here because uh, I haven't refreshed this in a little bit. Uh, and exactly what I said, look at this range, 1795 to 1810, kind of sideways all week. Most of the activity taking place in the mornings, uh, uh, New York open. It's kind of a strange little anomaly. Maybe it's just because I started looking recently at the 24-hour charts, but no, it isn't because it is. It's, what's happening is a lot of the activity in precious metals, the, uh, the ups and the downs, uh, the big ups and the big downs uh, for the day have been happening in uh, the opening at New York uh, and usually ends around 11 o'clock or noontime at the latest. Uh, 1800 currently right now, precious, you know, gold, precious, <laughs> my precious. Uh, and uh, the low is 1795 and a high of 1810. So we're kind of just a little bit above that low today. Uh, silver all over the place a little bit too as well. Currently at 2413, a low overnight at 24. Oh, it didn't budge below that 24, 2399 mark. Uh, it's staying above that uh, psychological 24 mark, which leads me to believe that maybe tomorrow's the day they'll, they'll try to monkey hammer it. We'll see. Uh, but uh, 2426 is the high. We're at 2413, and platinum still maintaining above that $1,000 mark, although it's off from that mid $1,000, you know, 1050s it was in for a little while. But it looks like all the metals are in the green right now, even palladium um, merging back into that $2,000 per ounce price. Uh, boy, it's good. those two metals aren't too far apart from it. Man, palladium just disintegrated over the last few months. I'm glad I don't sell a lot of it because those people wouldn't be too happy, aren't too happy right now. That's a market I don't understand uh, very well. Let's look at the uh, 24 hour gold price here. And again, what have I been pointing out? When has all the action been happening? In the morning, New York NYMEX uh, uh, starting at around 8 a.m. Take a look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we've got a little uh, choppy up action though here. Uh, what's this? Uh, the blue line right here is going to represent uh, uh, 
Tuesday, okay, because we're in Thursday right now. Sorry about that. So take a look at the blue line on Tuesday. And you could take this line back for the last couple of weeks, I think, and you'll see that, that odd, you know, it's just odd that uh, uh, all the action or the primary action on the up and down mar movements of gold and silver for the last few weeks or more have been uh, in, in the morning, New York opening, and it kind of flattens out, as you see here, during the rest of the day. Uh, and then it kind of moves into uh, Hong Kong markets where it kind of moves up a little bit. So Asian and New York markets, it looks like. Um, take a look at this, though. Uh, we're back up a little bit here. And where, where, where was I? I'm sorry, I kind of got sidetracked here. All right, there's a Tuesday um, where we uh, went below that $1,800 mark right here. Take a look at that. Wow, big whack on Tuesday. And then kind of back the rest of the day, it, it fluttered in just below that $1,800 mark. Uh, yesterday uh, is the red line right here. Take a look at this, kind of sideways from there, and then boom, got banged again uh, around the exact same time uh, in the New York market. Uh, take, you know, right about there, not too much after. And that's probably around 9 o'clock or 8 or 9 o'clock or something like that. And uh, take a look at uh, this morning. Here's the green line right here. Uh, we're above it. We're, we're kind of up in that $1,800 market, kind of settled down a little bit. I'm not sure if that was in the Hong Kong or the London market. And then the New York market, bang, you get that. Uh, movement, but you got another movement up there too. But kind of funny, it looks like most of the activity. Look at the, you know, look at the graph here. Has been in the mornings uh, uh, during New York uh, trading hours, uh, and the rest of the days have kind of uh, flattened out like that. And you'll see the same thing with silver. Uh, let me move down to that graph. Um, same exact kind of pattern. Look, eight New York in the morning. You see a lot of activity happening, and then before noon, and then for the rest of the day, it flattens out. Uh, this is a pattern I've noticed for the last couple of weeks. Really not, can't explain it myself. Maybe I just started focusing on it, perhaps. That's why I've seen it. But uh, uh, I don't think it, it, it's typically been this way. Usually most of the activity we've seen in precious metal markets on the upside and the downside have been on Fridays or, 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 or Sunday nights or, or Monday mornings or, or during week trading hours and mostly to the downside. Uh, so there's you know a little strange action, a lot of activity going on in New York, uh, particularly in the during the opening hours in the morning. Um, don't know what that means, but uh, it's kind of interesting that you can spot it, look at it, and see it, uh, especially on the graphs here. And uh, what else do we got to talk about? Not too much, as I said, as far as news. I went and I looked for precious metals news, and not you know not much here. Um, you know I'm going to go down the thing here and see if there's anything that uh, I can make comments on. You know I can make comments on just about anything from fish to politics to economics. Uh, oh, well, anyway, I, I have nothing good to say about this. So if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all, right? Okay, and I have nothing good to say about this either, so I won't say anything. And White House begs OPEC to increase oil production amid supply issues. Uh, what, what troubles me about the supply issues is that we cut that, we, we, we that pipeline that we were going to build in the United States, which, which would have helped bring more oil or uh, increase the oil supply here in this country a little more, uh, shale oil. Um, you know, uh, the new administration is talking about cutting down into electric and uh, uh, getting rid of uh, fossil fuels and stuff like that. But, you know, it's going to cost a fortune. And really, you know, the ideal times to do things like that, you know, idealistic projects for America, you know, things that would, you know, ultimately, going to electric would be good for America uh, over time if we could do it slowly um, and phase out fossil fuels, not on an uh, accelerated basis that these people are trying. Not to mention, look at the economics, uh, you know, the economic situation is just dreadful. You know, how can you, how can you propose to spend oodles, oodles more money when you just don't have money? Um, of course, they print it. That's what they think. But that's what happens when you uh, allow socialists, uh, when you give them the checkbook, is they just keep writing checks. They don't know anything about putting deposits in, but they sure know how to write the frickin' checks. Uh, let me move down here. So, uh, yeah, uh, oil issues. I think Europe has even bigger oil issues. And uh, interestingly enough, as the price of oil goes up, we have seen, and where is my chart? Let me, macro trends, macro trends. Uh, of course, you know I like those charts. So where is that oil chart and precious metals? I'm going to hit there. Gold versus oil prices. So if we start to see dramatic, and we are, think about this. You're, we're going to see a dramatic rise in oil prices here coming up because of the green error, okay? And uh, 
uh, that means uh, oil prices, I mean, I don't think oil prices are going to go down. Uh, I think, in fact, oil prices are going to go up here coming, you know, coming soon. And take a look at the correlation between uh, rising oil prices and rising gold prices. There is a correlation there. So, you know, if, when we start to see higher uh, oil prices here coming up shortly, uh, will that be a catalyst to, r to raise the price of gold? I certainly think it could be and probably will be. However, there's a lot of catalysts that should be raising gold right now and why gold should be much higher than it is. Uh, we won't get into that. We talk about that all the time, the monkey hammer and who does it and how. Uh, but that's part of winning the game, what I'm always talking about here. Of course that game is rigged, but don't let it stop. If you don't play, you can't win. So we're winning. And keep listening to me with precious metals and you do, you'll do fine. Remember, this is about wealth preservation. If you want to get rich quick, go to, go to a casino or play cryptos or something like that. Uh, you know, you, big, you know, uh, big risks, uh, big gains sometimes. <laughs> you know, with gold, there's no big risk involved. There's zero big risk involved, and there's always gain involved. You know, it may not be the type of double-digit gains that, you know, most people expect in this uh, I want it now world, but uh, the beauty of gold is it's going to be there for you. It's been here for 5,000 years. It's not going anywhere fast. It's not going to go bankrupt. It's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a preservation of wealth at the very least. Uh, let's take a look at some other things here. Uh, misery as U.S. curve inverts at long end. Uh, I'm sure that's good for prices of gold. Um, hmm, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. And I don't have anything good to say about these people right here either. Uh, GDP misses as U.S. economy grows only 2%. Weakest growth since the uh, C struck. Uh, wow, uh, Q3 GDP number is bad, but not nearly as bad as it could have been. Well, that's comforting, I guess. At 2%, it did indeed miss the 2.6 consensus, but it could have been worse. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but perhaps what we saw on this chart, where is the 24-hour gold chart? Maybe New York this morning right here, you know, we were going to see our typical monkey hammering that we've seen the last couple days and we've seen the last few weeks during this time frame. All right, death by a thousand cuts, maybe how that's... Maybe that's how they're suppressing the price of silver and gold now a little bit. Death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> um, uh, well, not death, but you know what I'm saying, is uh, trying, trying to knock it down just by cutting it a little bit every day at the same time. And look at this uh, activity here. But maybe this jump right here in the price of gold, primarily in gold, you didn't really see it in silver. Uh, you've seen a little bit of up there, but uh, take a look at this jump in gold right here. Maybe that's uh, when the uh, GDP news uh, uh, missed. Uh, I sure wish I had some kind of graph that would show me, like, uh, you know, you know what markets is trading in. You could find out what news uh, period, you know, what time a certain news was given out, like the GDP or, or you know, whether the Fed was going to rise, raise, interest, uh, raise interest rates, that kind of thing, news that you could look and say, oh, look right here, you know, I see my little hand here. Oh, it says right here is when the uh, GDP rates were announced. And you could see a spike like that. There are some correlations here. And again, I, I really believe that, uh, they, you know, uh, news does move gold and silver, you know, uh, quite substantially sometimes. Uh, let's take a look at uh, 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 narratives do. Narratives move gold and silver as well. Ford shares pop on, uh, not too talk, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, uh, Cy, uh, the president of uh, 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 Taiwan, uh, is it Taiwan? Yeah, I'm sorry. It confirms U.S. Um, yeah, Taiwan. Uh, confirms U.S. boots on the ground. Uh, I, mean, I guess we've all known it. China knows it. But that's going to be very, very uh, uh, in your face, a poke in the eye of the tiger. Uh, <laughs> uh, China's not going to like that too much that uh, they come out and just outright said it, made it public. I mean, everyone's kind of known that we've had troops over there. Uh, but this, this has the potential to heat up into something bad. And what concerns me is that a lot of times administrations and presidents in the past have used wars to kind of take the focus off themselves. Uh, I know that sounds uh, a little bit out there, but, it, but it's true. Sometimes a good war will, uh, uh, you know, for a bad economy, uh, wars do a lot of good for administrations trying to stay in power. I mean, look at FDR. <laughs> So let's, uh, well, not that he had anything to do with that war, but, you know, creating wars or, 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 or diverting the attention away from the things you're doing wrong to the things that other countries are doing wrong has always been a tactic used by politicians. Uh, let's move out of that. Uh, again, that gets very political. Not too much to talk about. I say that a lot uh, lately because not a lot of good gold and silver articles out there. And maybe uh, it's just I'm getting tired of looking at the same old ones. <laughs> so 
Uh, let's take a look at Wall Street Silver, uh, the rise of Wall Street Silver, and uh, uh, what kind of uh, the rise of, I didn't even see that part. Uh, Wall Street Silver, um, just kind of like to look and see what's going on out here. Questions, uh, uh, I'll talk about some products, for example. I think Maple Leafs right now, we got them for sale for spot plus 475. The best deal out there uh, for all the coins, I think, is Britannia's. I th believe you can get Britannia's for uh, the silver price plus four dollars and twenty-five cents. Last I check, I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. And uh, maples are spot plus four seventy-five. I'm not sure what the turtles are worth. And uh, let's go down here and see what else I can see. Uh, <laughs> if you need a T-shirt, say yes. Uh, gosh, you know, I talked about yesterday the power of what I think Wall Street Silver is. I mean, take a look at their membership here. Where is it? Let me see if I can click on it. Get that page to come up and there it is 164,000 members I mean you know I think that I'd like to I, I wish I could talk to the moderators that uh, uh, run this site they have you know they, they don't have the it's fun to look at everyone buying their ounces of silver and 10 ounces of silver but you know you're not going to short that market by convincing 164,000 or 250,000 people to go out there and buy a few ounces every week it's just not going to happen man uh, but what what their real beauty and what their real power of Wall Street silver on Reddit group is I mean look at that 164,000 people the real power here is legislatively is uh, and I believe that uh, as this Wall Street silver uh, site matures and all sites mature and all all uh, uh, videos and hopefully mature and get better over time I think that they're going to recognize the power that they have uh, legislatively and I mean in a good way not not getting people to a uh, drag it drag people out of their offices and tar and feather them but you know have well scripted uh, uh, things that their uh, Wall Street uh, silver apes can call up and say hey man uh, you know I'm a silver uh, a small silver investor I've been buying silver for years the manipulation by the big four to eight banks that are doing this you know specific layout specific facts that uh, uh, what is really happening out there and we know this stuff is happening and uh, uh, call regulators I mean call the uh, legislators call uh, the regulators CFTC uh, do it professionally and do it well but I mean can you imagine the power of that even uh, with 164,000 members if they just got a few hundred to call I mean that would overwhelm these people and and they would start to look but it would have to be consistent and again professionally done uh, uh, but that's the power I see behind this group right now I don't see the power of buying uh, one ounce and ten ounce and I just don't see that no matter how much they encourage all the individual members to buy silver that that's going to make any kind of real significant difference uh, I think bringing uh, publicity to silver silver manipulation and what's going on is it was very helpful and is still helpful uh, but even the most helpful thing I can see this group doing is is getting involved getting more involved in uh, uh, again the legislative manner and uh, calling these people well let's uh, move along to uh, yesterday's video um, uh, YouTube video with the feds big risk and sorry about getting that thing out late uh, we just had some uh, technical issues and a few things uh, go on remember this is not a high high dollar uh, um, <laughs> high dollar uh, uh, event that uh, I've got going on here uh, it's just basically quick time we used to screenshot everything and then uh, put plug a mic into the computer and I just go at it uh, obviously you can tell that sometimes that I just go at it blah 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 as I've seen the comment a few times <laughs> well it happens you know you can't do, you do these things every day well let me take a look and answer some questions here and we'll close it up for the day uh, newest first and uh, see if I can answer some specific questions there. Um, uh, Inspector Jason says, uh, thoughts on feds with unrealized gains, task gold to the moon if this happens. Uh, you know, gold and silver are going to go to the moon anyway. They're both on a roller coaster to the moon in a fiat uh, debt driven world. Uh, gold and silver are ultimately are going to be the ones that get there. Uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of choppy, a lot of up and down, as I said, a roller coaster to the moon type ride, but. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to the moon anyway. And the, uh, I guess the unrealized uh, tax gain thing didn't gain any traction yesterday. And apparently they shot that down, I think. Uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks for uh, watching, Inspector. I appreciate that. Uh, Wall Street Silver is a bunch of meme stock dopes oop, who don't understand the power of the metal or how powerful the United States vo voices could be. The movement will be dead a year if they don't get serious. Um, you know, I... I, I, I <sighs> 
I, I don't want to say they're dopes. There's a lot of really smart guys out there. I mean, there's a few. There's dopes in every every uh, uh, website and dopes in every everywhere out there. <laughs> I'm even a dope some days, you know. I, <laughs> but uh, um, I don't know if I could call them all dopes. I think they're all very enthusiastic. I think it's real important what they're doing out there is they're bringing attention to precious metals and silver. Uh, and then th again, the enthusiasm is great. Uh, I believe that they will eventually, you know, and they have, they have power, just like you said here. Uh, I don't think they understand quite yet how powerful their United Voices could be. And uh, Potter Stacker, you kind of really nailed it. I don't think they quite know yet, all right? Doesn't make them dopes. Uh, you know, again, we're all dopes in something. You know, nobody's, you know, everybody's an expert in something and then other things are complete morons, myself included. <laughs> you know, I've got my expertise and there's things I'm complete, you know, completely stupid about. Uh, uh, the only way you know I'd be stupid about them is if I started talking about stuff I didn't know. So, uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, the they, they're very powerful. They have the potential to be extremely powerful if guided in the right direction. If it's done professionally, uh, as far as them being dead in the year, you know, I could kind of see that a little bit because, again, you the manipulation is not good. Uh, they have the power to actually make changes. I'm telling you. Uh, I, you're right, they, they don't understand how powerful that group is with the right script and the right professional call in to the right people, you know, kind of the way the NRA and other organizations do it, you know, call your senator, call your congressman, you know, call the uh, CFTC, call, you know, call COMEX, call CME, but again, have a professional script for each one of them, Everybody, you know, people call and understand what they're doing, uh, I'd like to have you investigate this, blah, 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 like professional. Uh, they have serious frickin' power, and I don't think they see it yet. And I'd like to see them develop that. Uh, and uh, again, if they don't, uh, and the manipulation continues on and on and on, uh, a lot of these guys have short attention spans in the silver market, so they will lose interest, and the site could die off a little as well. So there's some truth to that. Thanks for watching. Pot I hope not, though. Thanks for watching, Potters. I appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> uh, no argument there, sir. Can't argue with that. Uh, Gritty uh, says the sovereigns are the ones I like to pick up from my local coin store. They usually get them closer to the spot than quarter maples. Yeah, uh, uh, British sovereigns are 0 0.2354 ounces. I mean, the math is a little inconvenient, but if you can remember it and you can do math, it's not a big deal. Uh, they are cheaper for sure than quarter maples, quarter eagles, and the other quarter ounce products. Uh, and it's old school stuff. That's what. That's before there were quarter ounce maples and quarter ounce eagles and, and Krugerrands. Uh, that's just what people bought for uh, fractional gold. They bought uh, uh, French 20 francs, which is 0.1863. They bought uh, uh, Austrian ducats, which were 0.1107 or 1109, I think. And they bought, uh, um, what else? They bought, uh, 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 I said French 20 francs at 0.1863. But anyway, those were the fractional pieces, 0.11, 0 0.18, and 0.23. Uh, uh, so that's what people bought and it's still a great deal today if you can pick them up in your local coin stores it's just as good a deal as Maple Leafs and the other products in my opinion hey thanks for watching Gritty and uh, uh, I'm glad you uh, p you know I'm glad you noticed that uh, comment from yesterday about uh, sovereigns being a good deal uh, Joey uh, says it's interesting that the Great Depression when everyone was looking for work the signs all read no help wanted today in this depression when the signs all read help wanted nobody's looking for work um, well, it's true uh, for a couple reasons. The fact is, is that you know you can accuse people of being too lazy to go back to work, but and, and there is a certain amount of laziness out there, and there's a certain amount of people that are victims and expect to get some kind of paycheck because uh, they don't want to work that hard. I don't argue with that. That's true. However, wages have not kept up with the cost of living. You know. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I am certainly against uh, mand mandatory wages, you know, or, or wage, you know, I don't think we should set wages, uh, government or anyone. I think wages should be between the uh, person hiring and the person that wants to do the job. All right, I, I don't think government should be involved with it at all. I don't think what government should ever set wages. However, I can tell you that I believe wages are a uh, suck, really. I mean, you can't live on $12 an hour. You can't live on $15 an hour in any suburban area. Maybe you can uh, somewhere in uh, Idaho somewhere. You know what I'm saying? If you can, <laughs> but you, you can't live on the money that the, uh, that that a lot of places are paying right now. And it's a catch-22, especially for small businesses. Small businesses are working from a lot of tight margins that they can't afford to raise it that high either. So who's to blame? It's not low wages specifically to blame. It's inflation. 
And inflation has been around for a long time. It's been raising its ugly head for a long time. We're seeing, an ex we're seeing it now. It's been accelerating. Inflation's accelerated uh, substantially. But uh, uh, this is what is the real tax on Americans, the working class and the poor. It's, it's inflation. And inflation is created by the Fed and governments. It's their fault, folks. It's their fault. Uh, it's nothing else. They can blame what they can blame this. They can blame uh, uh, 2020. You know the pandemic. They can blame. You know, but the truth is, it's their fault. It's their boneheaded, stupid decisions that got them in, got us into these messes today. It's their thinking about live today, worry about it tomorrow type attitudes. Uh, it's the greediness uh, of our politicians and our officials uh, that have gotten into, gotten us into this situation today. This is why we're going where we're going. Uh, this is why you know uh, you can't survive on 15 bucks an hour, um, and and the fact that the uh, buying power of the dollar is just getting less and less. People just don't see that. Most people don't understand that. Uh, Hagler the Hodler, thanks for watching, Joey. Uh, says great Briti great video, bro. <laughs> Sorry, great video, bro. I think I'll get some British sovereigns. That's a good idea. I pre you know I've been thinking about buying some of this, and uh, yeah, uh, if you can pick them up for the right price and you're not paying too high of a premium, absolutely. I think they should be um, under 30, 30 bucks or less uh, under overmelt uh, for sovereigns. Um, and, <laughs> and yes, sir, I agree with that as well. Uh, Robert Kennedy says, so it's you telling everyone to buy when I've been wanting to buy. I don't know if I like you anymore. Hey, listen, uh, all great minds think alike. Uh, Robert Kennedy says, you, can talk about, you can't talk about money without talking about politics. Yeah, that's true, sir. I mean, absolutely true. You can't talk about money without talking about politics. Um, you know, so <laughs> I've said it many times because a lot of a lot of people say, Brian, you really should stay away from politics and don't give your opinion on politics. Um, and uh, that's probably why I got thrown off Facebook. <laughs> but they called it hate speech and uh, violence. I, I just call it political opinion. Uh, but uh, uh, you can't talk about money without politics. And you're absolutely right, Robert. Thanks for watching. And Silver Lou says, uh, I'll buy anything other than an obnoxious beast. <laughs> okay. Uh, personal opinion, but I look forward to the Commonwealth uh, dumping everything else. Well, keep buying, keep stacking, even if it's not Royals. Uh, whatever you're stacking, Lou, keep doing it. You're doing a good job. Thanks for watching. Solid information. Thank you. Michael Matthews uses you as well. Uh, Donald says, our so-called high premiums merely revealing the ridiculous manipulation of the so-called spot. And the prices charged represent real current value for physical silver versus fiat paper contracts. Um, no, not really, Donald, because you can get 1,000-ounce bars. The product's out there. On the retail side, the product is kind of uh, not as available. You know, we, we, we have to look at the fact that, you know, the closures, 2020 was closed down. Most states were closed down. Mints were closed down. The people that produce this stuff were closed down. And even though they're opened up, we still got, you know, uh, murkiness in the supply chain it, with precious metals as well. The guys that make the bars, the guys that make the one ounce rounds, the guys that make the maples, especially the, the government stuff. Governments just went crazy, shut everything down. You know, the Canadians, the U.S. Mint, the Canadian Mint, the Perth Mint. Uh, so that's why their product has been, you know, they're the largest producers of product. Their spot product has been spotty just because of the uh, closures. So a lot of these uh, issues we're having right now are because of the closures. But but there's a caveat, and I don't want to say but, because but usually means that what you said before is a lie, but, uh, but. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a word, it's hard to get out of your vocabulary. However, uh, I am going to point out that uh, uh, supplies on silver even, were tight, though, and, and, and there is some truth to the fact that uh, above ground silver supplies are tight out there. Uh, however, for retail product, uh, that's the reason that we're seeing a lag on that. Uh, constitutional silver and eagles are legal tender in the USA, and uh, yeah, that's true. In 1963, one gallon, 25 cents. Uh, 2021, one gallon for a silver quarter. Uh, yeah, interesting comparison, and thanks for making that comparison, Don. I appreciate that, and appreciate your watching as well. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I appreciate you watching, and uh, I am uh, same location here. You know, I'm a second generation dealer, been in the same location since 1995. We only deal locally, folks, so if you don't live in my area, please find yourself a good local coin store. They're out there. You may have to drive to find one, but they are out there. And uh, uh, we're open 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays for my local peeps. And if you got any questions and you live local and you want to buy gold or silver, please come in and see us. Or again, call us anytime between 10 and 4. And as I said, if you don't live local, 
please find yourself a good local dealer. Uh, I advertise to be Atmex, AM, and uh, AM. <laughs> uh, Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. Uh, I can beat their prices for my local folks, you know, that want to buy gold and silver in my area. Uh, and I can give you uh, one to one uh, personal service with me or my employees, uh, which you can't get from uh, online companies. Hey, thanks again for watching. Have yourself a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.